All right, in this video, we're going to be going over how you store data in R. Now, specifically, we're going to be talking about the different data structures that you can use to store data in R. Now, they all constitute R objects of one form or another. The first and most basic is just to save a simple scalar point or a single value. And this value can be numeric, such as the number 5. Or it could actually be a string of text. Let's say if we wanted to save the word hi. Now notice that whenever you enter a string value, you need to delimit it, delimit the values that you want in quotes. So if you were just to type a equals hi without any quotation marks, you would actually end up getting an error message. Now this is great if you want to save constant for later use. However, in most cases, you're actually going to want to save more than just one value. In which case, the next way you can save sort of this additional layer of complexity is a vector. So let's say we wanted to create a vector that contains the values 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So C for combine and then type in all the values you want to save, each one separated by a comma inside the parentheses. And if we look over in our global environment, we can see that value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that we've assigned for y. Now, there is a simpler way to do it if you're going to have sequential values. So if you wanted to have y actually equal to the numbers 1 through 10, you can actually come over here and go 1 colon 10, which will tell R that you want all the values 1 through 10 in the sequence. Now, you don't have to do this just for a sequence starting at 1. You could actually start at any number you want. So, for example, let's reassign x to the values of 11 through 20. Here you can see x. Is overwritten to include these 10 values here. Now, you can save a vector of string values as well. So, for example, we may want to save all the words in the sentence. How? Oh, C for combine. R. Q. And we can see we saved all those values. Now, this is a little bit of a silly example, but you could see situations where you would want to save this, especially if whatever your data you're storing is nominal in nature. Political party, gender, race, ethnicity, biological sex. So let's take that last one as an example. Let's say we had two participants, one of which was male and one of which was female. There we go. Now, there are times when you want to call up a specific value from a vector. So maybe you needed to know what was the you know, height of the first participant or whatever it happens to be. So if you know the position in the vector, you can actually do what's called indexing and look up that individual value. So if we wanted to know in the y vector what the value is, of the first element that we have in there, we can pull that up. So y, first one there is 1. We go here. Yeah, it matches. Now you can pull up multiple at a time using this. Let's say we want the first three values. There we have it, 1, 2, 3. Or we could actually look up everything but those three values by adding a minus sign before it. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So everything after that third value. The next level of data storage is something called a matrix. So what a matrix is, is just an n by n array. So to create a very simple one in R, we can sort of create a new R object called Z. 
and then we'll use the function matrix. First thing we'll want to put in is the values we'll actually be putting in that. We can actually borrow some of these values from the array, and then we specify the number of columns that we want. In this case, let's say we want two columns. Type in Z, print it out. So we can see here that we have an array, two columns, and five rows. Y had 10 numbers originally, so Argo says, okay, I'm going to divide the scores evenly up between these two columns, and it enters all the numbers in the first column, and then into the second column. Now, alternatively, you could actually specify a matrix by the number of rows as well, as opposed to the number of columns. So let's say we wanted a matrix with two rows. Here you can see that R still goes into each and every single column first with the values. Now, another way you could actually create a matrix is to actually bind two elements together as separate rows or separate columns. So let's create another such matrix. So in this case, we can use the function row bind, where we combine X and Y into a matrix as different rows. So here we can see we have all the values for X, and indeed, it even gives us that variable name right there, and then all the values for Y. Or alternatively, we can use CBind to get this in columns. Just like in a vector, we can actually pull up specific values and we would use the brackets to do so. So we would actually type in the matrix that we want, add our brackets, and then just to show you how we would do it, we would have row and then column number specified. So if we wanted to pull in the first value of column one row run, it would be one comma one. If we want to go ahead and jump down one row, two comma one, and there we are at 12. Now you could ask for it to report an entire row, in which case you actually just leave the column number blank. All right, let's clear the console here real quick to give us a little bit of space. See? All right, that's better. So the most common type of data structure that you'll probably end up interacting with in R, especially if you're doing biobehavioral research, is a data frame. And that data frame is ultimately essentially just a matrix. However, it's a lot easier to interact with different columns as different variables. So for example, uh, you may have a data frame where the first column is actually a string character identifying your experimental condition. And the next column is a measurement on whatever your dependent variable happens to be. So to start, let's look at just a very quick and dirty, simple data frame. Example, data frame equals data dot frame. And then in this column, we actually end up specifying, excuse me, inside the parentheses, we end up specifying the different data we want as the different columns. So perhaps we want X and Y as our two different columns. So if we actually pull that up, we can look at our data frame. And note that it does look like a matrix. However, it's go ahead and conserve the names of these different elements, X and Y, and then enter them as columns for us. All right, now something you can do at this point is you could actually name those columns something different. So let's say that X is the number of times that someone visited the emergency room and why is how many accidents they've actually had in the recent past. So if we were to sort of overwrite that, data.frame, and then ER visits equals X and accidents equals Y. All right, so now we can see we actually renamed those columns. Now, you can actually index these columns just like you would in a matrix as well. However, because we're actually giving variable names, we can actually specify something by variable. So example data, 
frame the dollar sign and then we can pull up whatever um, variable we happen to want. And you can see here even that our studio is actually sort of pre-populating different options for. So let's say we wanted to look at the number of ER visits and then we can actually see it. Now you can even add new data to a data frame by essentially creating it and saving as it, it as if it was an R object. So let's say we want to create a new example data frame that's going to encode the biological sex of whatever this individual happened to be. Example data frame. And then instead of selecting a pre sort of ordained option, we would sort of type in what happens to be the new variable that we want. So in this case, we're actually going to use what we typed in for D earlier, which was an array with two elements with the string values male and female. Now, what you should note in this case is R actually goes through and fills out the entire column for biological sex and tell us of equal length to the rest of the column. And how it does that is it just goes male, female, and then starts the array over and over and over and over and over again. Now, one nice thing about a data frame is we can actually go in and also conditionally subset it as well. So say we wanted to look at just the ER visits and accidents for the individuals who happen to be male. So we can come through and subset that. Brackets just like before, only now we actually specify a condition. So we want the scores in example data frame who in the biological sex column are equal to male. Hmm, where did my code go wrong? I did not specify which columns. All right, so this is kind of a simple silly error. Don't forget, you are subsetting a matrix So we've specified which columns we want, but we still need, or excuse me, we specify which rows we want, but we still need to specify which columns we want, which in this case happens to be all of them. So we can see all the ER visits, all the accidents for only the male individuals in our sample.